Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today we're going to look at the concept of slope and I must get my highlighter first, all right? The concept of slope and uh, we're looking at different slopes, etc. All right, it's part of your grade 11 geomorphology. Okay, so let's save your data and let's get going. Okay. I think a simple explanation or definition of a slope is the rise or fall of the landscape. So this is not a slope, ah, slightly a slope there, but it's not a slope if it's horizontal, but this is a slope. This is a slope, all right? It sits at an angle, okay? Now, let's look at types of slopes. We have primary slopes. These slopes are formed by the internal forces of the earth. Example, faulting and folding. Let's look at fault. You know, fault is a crack in the rock. And what happens when faults happen sometimes? One part of the rock when it cracks here, yeah? can you see it? One part of the rock subsides and when it subsides in that crack can you see a slope forming okay so it was there everything and there you see the slope forming you see the slope forming here yeah. sometimes you've done these features before i know all right there's two falls the middle piece comes down can you see the sides a slope forms okay so that's one way and that is faulting all right primary slopes okay that's how your slopes form then folding let me move my face a bit can you see here the rock was straight horizontal strata straight then there was forces applied to it this is compression yeah stress and compression pushing it what happens to the rock now it starts to fold can you see a slope forming there that's your slope forming, all right? So folding also creates it. Don't worry about all the names here at the moment, but all we need to see how a fold is caused. Can you see it? It's folding and therefore when it folds, it causes a slope, your primary slopes. Then we have slopes caused by erosion, all right? These slopes occur when land is eroded, can be by wind, by water, or by ice glaciers, etc. Here we have one that is water. So this surface may have sat like that. And what did this river do? It eroded into it. And as it eroded, yeah, can you see it eroding? Okay, it cut through, all right? widening the top and the bottom stays narrow as it goes. But if there's further erosion, there's more widening. Can you see our slope formed? All right. So water eroded through. Ah, spelling mistake. Through. All right. The land to create a gorge. But this gorge has got slopes on it. All right. Now, of course, this will go further eroded, get further eroded. All right, and that's when we have our secondary erosion slopes. This results from erosion and weathering of the primary erosion slopes or the primary slopes. So this will undergo further erosion, making it wider, and that's when we get our secondary erosion slopes. Okay, have you got that? All right, I know you can't answer me but I know you're shaking your heads. Then we get the deposition slope. This forms when weathered material is deposited. Okay, it gets deposited. Material gets weathered here yeah, in this desert region. All right, it forms the sand dune. All right, when material gets deposited here. Yeah, all right, and as it gets deposited, can you see how the slope forms? All right, that's your slope there through deposition. And therefore you get your deposition slope. Okay, right. 
Now let's go a little more into it. Then we get something as a gentle slope now. See, this land is not very steep. It's lying very gentle. Even me, uh, at my age, I can walk through this with ease up this hill. It's nothing for me. All right, so this has a gradient of between 5 and 15 degrees. Not very steep. Okay, when the gradient gets steeper, if you look at my hand, this is like this, all right? And then it can get steeper and the angle changes. Look at my hand, can you see the angle changing? So from there to there. So if I had to draw this, this may be something like this, okay? Gradient not very steep to the horizontal, all right? Can you see it? If I did this, then I could see the gradient going like that, ah, that's steep, okay? So it's between five and 15 degrees. It's a low angle slope, very low angle to the horizontal. Can you see it? That's your horizontal. The angle is very small, so it's a low angle. Now, we will be asked to identify sometimes slopes on a, on a map topographic map which has contour lines etc how do we find this all right we'll notice here and when i show you the steep slope you will see the relationship between the two yeah we notice if you look at the contour lines the space between the contour lines the contour lines are further apart and you learn the further apart the contour lines the more gentle the area is okay so the further apart all right that's how you would see it on a contour map or on a topographic map showing you contour lines etc okay let's look at the next one a steep slope has a gradient of more than 15 percent can you see it more than 15 percent this is a high angle slope so if i draw my horizontal now i have to draw my slope like that no more like this. Can you see? All right, so it's a high angle slope. All right, a high angle slope. Can you see that? High angle slope. Okay, and you notice this. Whoa, this is a bad slope. All right, I think I'll make it up to here and then I'll stop. Okay, but what do you notice on a map? All right, on a contour map, topographic map with contour lines. They are closer together. Now look at this. Can you see this? The lines are closer together. I want to go back to the other one. Look at here. All the lines are further apart. And again, yeah, closer together. That's how you'll identify it on a topographic map with contour lines or a contour map. All right, this is how you will see it. Okay, let's go to another one. A concave slope. I like this simple. It's simple. It's rounded inward. Means it's rounded inward. Can you see it? Rounded inward. Can you see that as it's going? Okay, so it's rounded inward and it's steep at the top and gentle at the bottom. So if I draw it, let me draw another one. And let's go, let's make it a little better. Me not embarrass myself. Can you see? Let me do that. Steep at the top, gentle at the bottom. All right. Can you see that? That is your concave shape. It's rounded inward. Now, on a contour map, because it's steep at the top, the contour lines are closer at the top and further apart at the bottom all right if we if we look at uh, this situation you'll notice the contour lines are close at the top can you see this is the top okay but as we go to the bottom that's the bottom there notice what happens to the contour lines they become further apart close showing you steeper at the top Bottom showing you gentle at the bottom. Steep at the top, gentle at the bottom. Okay, learners, got that.
Then we look at the convex slope. All right. Now this is rounded outward. Okay. I like these things rounded in on and outward. Rounded outward. Can you see? There's a shape outward here. All right. It's going out. It's ballooning out. All right. Ah, there goes my pen again. Outward. Okay. I sometimes you get a more pronounced one like that. Okay. But it's ballooning or rounded outward. So it'd be the opposite now. It's steep at the bottom and gentle at the top. Can you see it? Can you see it's gentle at the top? And then when you come to the bottom, it gets steep. Okay. So on a contour map, the contour lines are closer at the bottom and further apart at the top. Now, this is the top. Can you see it? It's further apart, showing you gentle. When we go towards the bottom, it becomes steeper. And that is why your contour lines are closer together. It's, it's simple, learners, to actually do this. You can identify it on any topographic contour map if you learn this and look at the heights. Okay, so we're teaching you the map work also. Okay, significance of slopes now. Okay, one of it, settlements can be built there, all right? Okay, but it costs quite a bit in many cases, eh? if it's formal housing being built on a slope to build the foundations, etc. Okay, but let's not get into that. I wish I had a house on the slope, but let's not talk about that. All right, they built on slopes for aesthetic appeal. I mean, what a beautiful scenery in this area. You understand? To look down, maybe there's an ocean there, maybe there's something else there that looks very attractive. Let's not get into detail, but it's a beautiful view, right, of the whole area. Also, it could be situated on the north-facing slope. People situate on the north-facing slope because it faces in the southern hemisphere, especially, right, in the southern hemisphere. I think I must put that in brackets. SH, Southern Hemisphere. Because in the Southern Hemisphere, the north facing slopes receive more sunlight. So it makes it warm, especially during winter. Nice to have a warm area. You understand? It's beautiful to relax outside, etc. So that's another reason because of the sunlight, the settlement settle in on that. So we have settlements on slopes. Let's go on. Forestry can take place, all right, on steeper slopes. Trees can survive. You can see that here. Look at these trees. We also can get contour plowing, all right, where you're planting or plowing along contours of the land in order to minimize soil erosion. And it takes place on slopes. Look at this, all right. You've got contours. There's your your area there's another one farming so what happens is as the water comes down it doesn't just erode it collects here and irrigates these surfaces can you see it where the crops are so you have contour plowing that can happen also on slopes so slopes are not just something that's useless there can be so many things you can use it for all right look at this recreation all right you can see these people here, all right? Uh, they take many things, all right? I think I'm so happy about this uh, that I can see these people are hiking. I love to hike. You understand? Uh, this is definitely not me doing mountaineering, but many things. You can, some people in the Swiss Alps, they do skiing down there. So it's used for a lot of things, all right? I think I just love contour plowing. I just love it. I'll be repeating it here so you don't need to worry about it. Okay, you know contour plowing happens. Okay, so, but it's also used for recreation, hiking, mountaineering, uh, whatever. You can find those things. Skiing. So slopes are important for that. And as again, I'm saying, I'm pointing out my contour plowing again, all right, which I did before this. My apologies, learners. 
All right. Then building of infrastructure is a challenge, especially building your railway lines, your roads, etc. on slopes. Eh? So it is difficult to build on slopes. All right. So therefore, what happens is it costs more. Okay, so it's not slopes are not a huge advantage for building infrastructure, but sometimes it can be built when you follow the contours of the land. Look at this. Look at this road here. It's following the contours of the land. All right. So that you can't, you can't, it's impossible to build a railway line here. All right. It's not going to go up. Okay. And my car definitely won't go up here. You understand? It won't even go here. Forget it. Okay. Even that those, your dad's, four by fours and whatever is going to have a huge problem going up. So we have to build according to the contours of the land or slope. Okay, so it's four significances I gave you. Of course, you need to look at the resource, eh? Learners, whatever the resource gives you, don't just give general, we say significance, just give anything. See if the resource has got maybe people hiking, then you know it's for recreation, okay? Or contour plowing, you see. My favorite, I repeated it under recreation also. All right, my apologies. Then you know, okay? Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. All right? And all the best. Goodbye.